What's up again YouTube? I'm James Bodie and this is Relative Motion, a channel all about teaching you the best means from point A to point B. In this season we're continuing to look at the best piston powered helicopters in the world. And in this episode we're taking a look at the Schweitzer 300, which is one of the best trainer and small utility helicopters on the market today. The only other helicopter that can probably rival this is the Cabri G2, which we just talked about in the last episode. So let's launch that intro. So the Schweitzer 300 actually started life as the Hughes 269. This Hughes 269 is definitely the oldest helicopter on this list and was actually flying in development in the 50s. The Hughes 269 was originally a two-seat helicopter, however shortly after they introduced the 269B which is a three-seat model and has been created that way ever since. This however is still a one-row helicopter. So it is equipped with a bench seat in the front that will hold three people. Hughes was a great helicopter company that also is well known for the MD500, which later on this channel we will definitely do a video on. They even made the US Apache attack helicopter. However, in this helicopter's life, the Hughes Helicopter Company went out of business and then turned into the Schweitzer S300 that we now know today. Schweitzer also eventually developed another helicopter based on this one, but this one had a turbine engine, and it's definitely larger and has two rows of seats. However, this is one of the tiniest turbine helicopters made today. This helicopter's current model designation is S333, and this is another very interesting helicopter that this channel will be doing a video on when we talk about the best small turbine helicopters. So I hope you'd consider subscribing so you don't miss either of those videos. Some of the reasons the Schweitzer 300 is what I would definitely consider one of the best training helicopters is just starting out, this helicopter actually has reverse seating. So you fly from the opposite seat you normally would in a helicopter, which happens to be the normal way you would sit in an airplane, which is the pilot in command sitting on the left. Now I think there's a few reasons they opted for this seating configuration in this aircraft. I think the biggest being with the three seat bench seating configuration in the front, if you are flying with a pilot and two passengers, it's a lot easier for the pilot to fly on the left hand side and have the two passengers to the right. This is because the pilot always controls the collective with his left hand. So in this configuration, the cyclic is all the way on the left hand side and out of the way of the passengers on the right hand side. The other advantage of this is if you're using it in a utility configuration, this is generally a better layout. So whoever is doing the utility work, whether it's cameras or something else, can be on the right hand side and have lots of room to operate. And then also, if you're using this to pick up and drop off loads, Typically helicopter pilots like to sit on the left hand side for that type of operation. And this is so they have good visibility of what's below them. However, be aware because of this helicopter's small size, it's not going to be able to pick up that much weight. But would be ideal for smaller loads because of its low operating costs compared to bigger helicopters. And the last advantage of this, which ties back again to this being a good trainer, is it gives you a lot more options with the pilot and student in how they want to train. Like a similar situation in a driver's ed car. And the last note also on training is this is the only helicopter on this list that really does not have a governor ever. Now the governor is an automatic throttle control for the engine which helps keep the throttle matched to the load on the engine. And this is very important at maintaining a constant rotor RPM. So like I said with a governor this is done automatically. However like in this helicopter where you don't have a governor it basically gives you a fourth control that you have to manipulate and the throttle will be on the end of the collective lever. So as if having three controls wasn't enough, having four is quite a bit. I think this is a good thing on a trainer from the aspect of it really makes you get good at not using the governor, which is an important skill to have in case the governor does fail. However, I do think it has the disadvantage of the fact, of course you can always shut a governor off, and I think it's a little advantageous towards the end of training to actually get experience with a governor. So I guess take that with a grain of salt. And while I do think this is probably the best trainer helicopter, again maybe only next to the Cabri G2, I think probably the biggest disadvantage to this helicopter is some of the inefficiency this helicopter has because of its age. And this largely revolves around the fact it has a very blunt nose. So it's not the fastest machine on the list or the most efficient. However, it well makes up for these cons and other pros, I believe. Some other positives of this helicopter 
especially compared to the last one, the Cabri G2, is because it has three seats in the front, it definitely has a roomier cockpit. And if you are flying solo, it definitely has more room inside to carry cargo or gear. It also, like other helicopters on this list, has a three-bladed, fully articulated rotor head, which overall is definitely the one you want over a two-bladed, unless you're constantly trying to fit this in a tight spot in a hangar or a really small garage, and want some blades that line up better to the aircraft. So some of the uses for this helicopter besides training that I think it really excels at are the utility uses like I mentioned earlier. One of the biggest I think would be filming. I think this is probably the best small filming helicopter there is. And that has to do with the reverse seating like I mentioned earlier, and the fact this thing has an incredibly long endurance, which just leads to it being a good utility helicopter in general. It has an endurance of over seven hours depending on what you're carrying. And that's plenty of time before your butt's gonna get really sick of sitting in this helicopter. I also think this helicopter, because of its utilitarian look, lends itself well to having the doors off. Almost helps make it look like a Jeep or something. And if you're doing filming anyways, you're gonna want the door off so it's not interfering with your shots. I think another potential use for this helicopter is the hog hunting that's becoming more and more popular as this incredibly invasive species is destroying a lot more land. And I gotta be honest, this is on my bucket list because I don't know what's more fun than hanging out of a helicopter shooting a gun. I mean, just ask Ani, it's very fun. And the last thing this has to make it an even better utility aircraft is it has an option to hook up a cargo hook. You're not gonna be carrying a ton of weight with this thing. It's a pretty amazing feature this thing has and it would be particularly useful, I think, if you were hog hunting because you could pick up the hogs with the cargo hook and bring them back for some good snassage. Just ask my boy Catfish Cooley. Are we gonna have us some grub, baby? Yeah, boy! So I think objectively a lot of people would say it's probably the worst looking helicopter in this list. But even being the worst looking helicopter, I really do think there are some pros to the way this thing looks. I mean, for one thing, is maybe some people think helicopters are a little snobby, but if you show up in this thing, no one's gonna think you're trying to flash anything. The other thing about a utilitarian look like this is it's all exposed. And maybe I've spoke on this before, but this is similar to how military do the interiors of their aircraft. And one of the reasons for this is actually, if there are any mechanical issues or just issues with systems on the aircraft, they're a lot easier to spot if all the systems are exposed. And again, if this is a trainer helicopter, that's particularly useful because you can actually teach about the helicopter while you're showing the student around it. And I really think having a good idea of how the equipment operates is the base of any foundation of being a good operator of any sort of equipment. And the last possible advantage to look at this thing is I have seen these with the wheels left on and they don't look a whole lot out of place with the look of this thing overall. So you won't feel bad about leaving them on. And in these small helicopters is a huge advantage because those wheels can take up a good amount of space inside if you want to be able to ground handle this wherever you land and move it around. So while this thing might not be the flashiest thing in the world, I do think it's one of the safest helicopters on this list, mostly due to its proven track record. This is the oldest helicopter on this list and has been being produced the longest time. It also has seen extensive use in the military as a trainer, which has led to even more widespread use of this helicopter. So it's really a proven design, and if there are any problems with this helicopter, they've been well worked out by now. Maybe the only other helicopter as close to the proven track record as this one would be the Robinson R44 that we'll talk about soon. And with that, I'm gonna wrap up this overview of the Schweitzer 300. So if you're looking for a great trainer helicopter or a great small utility helicopter, I think this is gonna be the one for you. And of course, if you'd like to see more helicopters like this, consider subscribing so you don't miss any of these helicopter episodes. Because in the next one, we're gonna look at the next helicopter on this list, the Ingstrom F-28, which actually might be my personal favorite helicopter on this list. And it's what I think is probably the best all around piston helicopter you can get. But for some reason, it's not that common. Make sure to check back for that episode. And until next time, I'm James Bodie. And you've been watching Relative Motion. The governor does not need the governor to fly.